Sometimes I think you change into a girl just to spite me. Paul, stop. I'm just... The kid addicted to their PlayStation. Goes to Olive Garden just for the breadsticks, who've been just property brothers. I've never changed, Dad. I've always just been me. Hey, Palers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I am Robert. And this episode, we are covering not only one, but two episodes of Gen V Season 1. So uh, we're covering both Gen V Episode 3, entitled... And 4. And 4. Uh, <laughs> episode 3 is entitled Hashtag Think Brink, And Episode 4 is entitled... Oh, I didn't put that down, didn't I? Oh, darn. Oh, no. <laughs> I did. The whole truth. Okay, so episode four is the whole truth. Uh, yeah. Mind you, I'm a little bit uh, lapsed, a little people, a little bit people, so sorry uh, to do this. But uh, I was away uh, with some friends on a podcast retreat, as I like to call it. So I was away in Boston with the one and only Steve Brown, who we're covering Loki with, as well as everybody else from the podcast network and other networks as well or podcasts so we had a good time a lot of fun going on so uh this is on the tail end but yet here we are we're going to be covering gen v season one episodes three and four so episode three think brink episode four the whole truth now before we get into it i'm going to actually tell you the synopsis for each episode so episode three think brink the synopsis for that is you're invited to the hashtag Think Brink Memorial Gala and fundraiser at Godolkin University. Make sure to dress your best. When the doors open at 7 p.m. and you hit the red carpet, then join the world's hottest superheroes and celebrities for selfies and complimentary champagne. And enjoy touching tribute to the legendary Professor Brinkerhoff, featuring A-Train, the Deep and polarity and then of course we'll be covering the episode four which would be the whole truth and that synopsis is the godolkin university uh, police department is seeking any information on the person or persons who violated the polarity statue in the groin genital area last night outside the school of crime fighting if you have any information please contact at God, UPD. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Uh, the reason why I said both synopsis and both titles is the reason why. Well, we might blend into the two episodes together with our overall thoughts, and there's nothing misleading. Obviously, I did not post anything because I was away for a weekend, an extended weekend, I should say. And, uh, you know, We'll we'll be back with episode five, so that way you could actually give us some formal feedback if need be. But with this, we're going to move right along into uh, these two episodes. So, Rob, yeah, what, what were your thoughts about the first episode? Uh, did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? What, was there anything specific about it that you wanted to talk about? Uh, so far, I've been enjoying this series very much. And the one thing I will say about it is that, and and then you and I were talking about this uh, offline, but yeah, it's just the amount of uh, social commentaries being done with this. Uh, I think it's actually almost res- almost a responsible thing that the showrunners are doing because it is. It, look, it's still a boys series you know so there's yeah. a lot of shocking things in there everything that you know from violence to a lot of the sexual things that you know happen there and just the things they even say but they are these all these things about bulimia there's these things about cutting yourself 
uh, transgender uh, children and what they go through, but they're doing it in a superhero or superpower uh, environment. Well, it's more creative. I always say it's a more yeah. creative element within the storytelling within. Right. And I think it's yeah. one of those things where like, if you actually did a show that was just covering that without having the whole boys universe in there, mm-hmm. I don't think, I mean, maybe, or maybe not, I could be wrong, yeah. uh, but I don't think it will make as such a big impact as this has been doing. I think when it comes to, the subject matter. Uh, yeah. But besides that, I mean, I think some of the really cool revelations that, you know, both, I think both episodes, but on this episode, you know, just little things that, you know, you notice about the families of these kids, you know, mm-hmm. so the family of the kids are responsible for giving them the, um, the serum. What do they call that serum again? Uh, what is it? Um, Oh, it's uh, what the V juice you're talking about? Yeah, the the whatever you know, whatever uh, <laughs> whatever thing that they gave them to give them superpowers. Yeah, it's the V juice. That's the literally V-juice. what they is, what it is. Uh, compound V. That's what it is. So yeah. the compound V that the parents are giving the kids because they want the kids to have superpowers, and it's more of a. It's exploitative more than anything. I want to give my kid powers so that way she could be as famous or a superhero Correct. like we see of the seven. And yeah. I want them. And now we have universities that will grant these kids some sort of training so that they can be part of the seven. And yeah, it, it's very much more about popularity, celebrity more yeah. than anything. And yeah. Yeah, I understand it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's uh like I said and and going back to what I was saying before with the uh the whole social commentary thing. I mean, that in itself, you know, how parents put so much pressure on their kids mm-hmm. to succeed or to be better than your neighbor's kid or something like that or the other yeah. kid. Uh, you know, so like Andre's father, all his concern is, you know, to make himself look good through and trying to I guess live vicariously through his kid Andre. Yeah. So, you know, those are one thing. I mean, there there's just so many th- this this show has so many different levels, I think, that is it's incredible. Oh Besi- yeah. Yeah, besides that, it's a fun freaking show. Oh, it I is. I mean, so, yeah. some of the great things that you see in there, sometimes it's just shocking the amount of crap that you just see coming out of there and you're like, I can't believe they did that. But, you know, not you expect it out of the boys universe. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We're we're expected a lot of the wackiest of weirdest things to happen. And right. to add to add to what you were talking about with the commentary and everything, one of the things that I did enjoy about this episode is uh Marie and us finding out what that when Emma eats, it makes her big. Right. And she walks in into the room. Marie walks into the room and she hears like a feeble voice, very small. And she and you realize that Emma is so small, smaller than a cricket. It's even smaller. We don't even see her. She was weak, too. And she was weak. And then she had to eat to get bigger. And we find out from her at that point too, the fact that she could actually get big. Like, not just. Well, at the end of the at the end of the episode, that's when we definitely see that we we do see it then. So that but in this case, we find out verbally from her is that she could go from one extreme, which is she could puke up and barf to her heart's content and then be as small as she needs to be. But as much as she wants to eat, which is like the uh, Alice in Wonderland thought that I had. Right. But, uh, you know, she eats, she gets bigger. So, right. But, uh, and my mistake is not at the end of this episode. It's the end of uh, the next, uh, the, the other episode, uh, episode four is when that's when we find out. No, it's at the end of this episode. Is it really? Yeah. It's at at the very end. Uh, oh, yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. She's at the very end. So it's not really spoiler based upon this particular episode. 
but it, it's it's interesting to say that we do get to see that aspect of her. No, no, it's actually a fourth. <laughs> I just looked it up. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, it's the fourth. The end of this episode actually. Uh, remember that it's uh when Emma goes to get Sam, mm-hmm. or in the uh. Yeah, she's all as high as fuck, and then she goes in, and then she meets him. No, no, Sam. Uh, so Emma, Emma. Uh, so and uh, Andre and Sam devise a way for. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Andre and, and Emma, Emma devise a way for Emma to get into where Sam is at. Yeah. So she turns herself small, mm-hmm. and then she's about to get caught. And she she jumps into the guard's ear. So Correct. spoilers ahead for everybody. If you haven't it's seen not this, a, it's episode. actually not a spoiler. This is actually in episode three. Yeah. She, so th- and that's what we're covering, right? Episode three yeah, right now. Yeah. So in episode three, she jumps in through the ear, kills them, and then the other guards go in, and that's where the episode ends. Correct. Right. It's in the next episode when they Sam goes to uh, the doctor's house. And everybody's trying to stop him, and that's when Emma gets big and big pinks and huge. Right, right. Yes, <laughs> yeah, because she basically goes, you know, Ant Man to Giant Man in a heartbeat in that particular episode. Isn't it amazing how, like, and again, as much as I watch this, I I keep going back to the X Men, or I keep going back to you know all these Avengers, or Avengers, something. and yep. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and. The the one thing I like about that is though we do see that uh, she has this nice conversation with Marie about it and explaining to herself. And during that whole gala, they they are more than just roommates; they are friends, right? And uh, it's even Marie says it. She goes, "I want to be more than just your roommate. I want to be your friend." And at, they're at that point where she's like. And, and then Emma just hugs, hugs her. <laughs> you know, it was like it was like Marie opening up to Emma, and she goes, "I I love you," kind of like attitude. And then of course you hear Marie go, and then it, it, if you had subtitles on, it says Marie urinating because <laughs> she was able to let loose and be relaxed. Oh, you you could hear it. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you could hear it. But yeah, yeah. No, it's uh the way it also starts. I think the way the show, I mean the way the episode starts in episode three, it's Golden Boy and Kate. And it's a flashback where we see them going to the facility. Ah, uh, yes. And as they're passing by one of the doors, they passing by. You can see Love Sausage um, member knocking from, on the window from uh, the original boys. Everybody, Corey. yes, exactly. So, and then we see how Sam is losing it, and the guards are trying to calm him down. And then Golden Boy is trying to calm him down. Yeah. Uh then you know all hell breaks loose but kate controls him and just puts him to sleep Mm -hmm. you know so and there's a lot of things with kate uh in the following next episode a few episodes where we find out you know things about her because of those abilities but um so that i like the way that started uh really well um because it gave us some insight into like golden boy and kate knew of this facility already yes they did and which means that they haven't been telling the group the truth, or at least Kate, who, because Golden Boy, you know, is dead, but Kate has been keeping all of this from the group. Yes. And she, she's been, her powers are being used by the university to hide certain things. Right. So uh, her powers are being used and utilized very much what we know from the boys itself, because they do that within the boys. Correct. Regular show as well. And it, it's really sad. You could see that the girl is torn as well. Mm-hmm. And I do. I like the character and I feel bad for her because she's put in such a predicament. Now, mind you, at this point, we already know that she's screwing around with Andre. Correct. So, so, and and it's interesting how you know that's happening. That whole that you know that whole thing where you're wondering, okay, how long has this been happening for, or is this a 
one-time thing, which it seems in this episode like it's a one-time th- like it just started. You know, it that just was started. One- yeah, right. that's how I felt when I first watched it. And- Correct. Yeah. So, and then uh, another thing that I thought was interesting. So, Justin J- Justine's apology to Emma for revealing that she gets small. You know, at first it seemed a little genuine, but then you see that Emma catches her yeah. filming the apology. And it's like, again, this is where we're going back to the whole, you know, bullshit about, you know, how the people are doing things for social media and things like that, just so they could get likes. And yep. that's exactly it, it, it was just such a uh, bullshit um, apology that I got mad at it. I was like, really? <laughs> so, it's like, you're filming this? Yes. Oh, yeah. well turn off the camera and tell me that without it and delete that. And they're like, right. No. Yeah, of course not. Yeah. You know, that so, was going to happen. And, and like I was explaining before, I think, uh, you know, when we start seeing the families, so like Andre or, uh, was with his argue, father polarity uh, polarity. He was arguing with his father polarity because of, you know, Andre not meeting, I guess, his expectations or doing what he's supposed to do. And then we see, of course, Emma's mom show up and all she's talking about is, you know, it's all exploitation about Emma. Yeah. How, you know, how they could exploit, how she could exploit her to, you know, get her own reality show or whatever the bullshit. You know, it's like you could tell her mom's just a piece of work. (laughs) It's all about the money. It's yeah, that's pretty much what it is. That's literally all it is. And even Emma knows it. And Emma was doing her own thing on YouTube or, you know, as little cricket. But now her mother and the publicist are like trying to charge this to the point where she can make money off of it and then get those like what she was talking to, like Rob, what that 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 girl that was trying to um, exploit herself too. Well, right. by exploiting Emma, you know, it's like, oh, just, we could exploit yeah, this. Seen, so basic, yeah. it's more exploitation upon exploitation. Yeah, no, and, absolutely. And it's sad. Uh, also, we do get like Jordan having to hide that they are a girl at times in front of her own parents and the father coming out saying, I had a boy. You you came out of your mother and it was I was like the proud father of a baby boy. And now. You know, and then basically they were just like Jordan just changes to the female version and starts talking to them. And the person that's there for publicity or the publicist or the uh, reporter gets disillusioned at that point and just walks away because they're like, oh, it's not about a guy. Right. And it's about a girl. And oh, my God. Well, uh, that's when I was saying that that that's part of the whole the whole series on, you know, touching upon all these different subjects. And funny enough, I didn't catch that the first time I saw it. I caught it the second time when I saw it. And I was like, oh, this is about transgender children and how it affects not only them, but the parents, how they see them. And they don't know how to cope with and how trans- phobic it is. Yeah. And how phobic it is. And. So, yeah. like, when I caught it, I was like, oh, my God, this is just so in your face. And I, I, I can't believe I didn't catch it the first time. But, yeah, it's it it made me feel really bad for Jordan and how his family sees him in yeah. that sense. But, you know, of course, you know, the the family. Well, it happens they... in the beginning. If you think about it, right around the time some the parents uh, start knocking on his dorm room door. Yeah. <laughs> and he's getting plowed or they are getting plowed by some guy then uses their guy voice. Right. Uh, Dad, I'm not there. I'm not ready yet. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, uh, he, guy was like, I'm not finished. He goes, you're finished. And that's it. And chucks him out. Right. And then changes right back to the guy version of Jordan. And Correct. In order to, to open parents. the door and or because he didn't want to show that, you know, he was ashamed to show his his parents that they that you know they were in female form. I don't think that it was a shame. It's just the fact that he knows how his parents feel. Yeah, you know, and, and stuff like that. But you know, I think he just had enough of it in the party, and he just said, "Screw it." I mean, this is who I am. You got to accept it. And Man. the parents are just having a hard time accepting that. But it was very well written in that sense. I thought that was a. I mean, for whoever 
whatever you know whatever person that is going through the same thing will definitely recognize this so quick and go oh my god yeah that's exactly how i feel so it's that's why i think the show just the writing in the show is actually very good when it comes to this it which makes me point to like some of the quotes that are in there and i'll i only have one quote and i won't put them in the quote section but i'll put it here uh jordan's father saying sometimes i feel you change into a girl to spite me and then jordan just retorts to his father or their father saying I'm just a kid addicted to their PlayStation who goes to the Olive Garden just for the breadsticks, who binges Property Brothers. I've never changed, Dad. I've always just been me. Meaning that it's just them stating, I've always been here, no matter what version. No matter of who I am, no matter what I what am. What you see, I am me. And I, I am, am still your I am child. still your I am still your child. Exactly. That's basically yeah. what it is. I am still your child. Yeah, it doesn't matter who I am. And that's the part that 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 got to me because I was like, wow, you know, that 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 was some powerful stuff there. Yeah, it was very powerful writing and it was done very well. The one quote I like, and I won't say, you know, word for word, but the one quote I like was when Sam was quizzing Emma to see if Emma was real because he thinks that he was imagining her. As oh a yeah. Thing. That was hilarious. And yeah. he's like, what's my favorite movie? And he, and he goes, she goes, well, you're it's white. either going to, you're a guy, you're a white guy. So it's either going to be the Godfather, uh, what was it? Godfather, Star Wars, or, um, Shawshank Redemption or something else. I forgot what it was. It was a Shawshank Redemption. Was it? Was it? it? Was, yeah. Uh, so, and he's like, no, it's water world. And she goes, water world and laughs <laughs> giggling. <laughs> and yeah. she starts to laugh. I laugh too. Cause I was like, out of all fucking movies, movies. <laughs> come on, man. Hey, Mad Max on water. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, it was interesting how, because it was funny. It's true. It's like, cause that's the first thing I thought it was like, well, the Godfather or, Maybe Star, Star Wars. Wars or, but I didn't, I never, I like, I don't remember the Shawshank Redemption, but it was, uh, it was interesting that he's like Waterworld. So that I thought was really cool. I thought that too. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool too. Cause it was kind of breaking down just in general dynamics of people. Right. And also the most absurd because you can never figure out what another person likes <laughs> yeah. ever. So this is like blind speed dating if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> but which, I, which we find out later that it, it does work out yeah no and what's interesting is that sam i guess whatever medication they're giving him somehow mm. is working because he doesn't want to leave now yeah so he he <laughs> he says well i got a bean bag i gotta you know he's like just i think the actor is actually very good um the way he portrays sam but they're trying to get, you know, she's trying to get him out. And then that's when all hell breaks loose. Yeah. Uh, so it's a it's it's a really cool scene. And the way just Sam's connects with Emma, I think it's also really cool because he just accepts her for who she is. She's accepting him for who he is. So I thought that was actually a, kind of a nice little connection between them. I think like they're. When you see them interact, uh, I, I I said it as soon as I saw it, it's like, yeah, these two are going to hook up. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, y- y- you could see who does hook up because of altercation or just alternating personalities. Right. Towards the end of this. Uh, and actually, we see it more so in the, the next episode. But I, I just like at the very end that towards the end of the party, all the ladies, Marie, Emma, Kate, and it was only three of them. Jordan. Oh, so I'm no Emma wasn't there. She was on right, the mission. Emma was with, in there, right? Yeah, with by Andre. So it was Marie, uh, Kate, and Jordan, and they were all female. They were all sitting around, and I think Kate made a joke about how you know being well off and things of that nature. And then Marie just gets all pissed off and just basically tells her, well, you want to know how I get my powers? I got it this way. You know, I, I just got my first period and I wound up accidentally killing my, my mother. And then my father came in and I accidentally killed him too. Right. And then, and then Kate wound up going into her 
situation as well about her brother as well, which right. we get to see a little bit later on, I believe. And and then Jordan makes a comment of saying something that she killed her uncle. And then she was like her grandmother. It was like, oh, I killed my grandma. And they're like, really? And I was like, no, no. but I felt left out. <laughs> exactly. But you could understand the respect and like she wanted to feel involved for the fact right. that it's like, oh, crap. I don't have any of these issues. I have my own other issues that are not, not as bad. Right. So, uh, and then you could see them feeling getting together as friends. Yeah. You kind of see them. I think as the show goes on, you definitely see the, the group getting a lot more tight, you know, and yeah. I think that's a really cool thing. What did you think about on the, you know, Andre's dad knowing about, uh, the woods and uh, knowing uh, about the facility and everything yeah. because when Andre told his dad, his dad told him to shut up and not say a thing. Mm -hmm. And that's when Andre kind of looked at him like with shock and disgust. So, yep. yeah, I thought that was. I didn't put it past him because he was part of the Vought machine. Mm. So, everything that, if you look at Polarity, what he was doing with Andre. He was pushing him more and more to be part of the seven or to be the next generation to go into the seven. Right. So because apparently he couldn't hack it. So my boy, my boy, he's got to be it. He's got to be the, the next one up. I, I you know, I, I did this. I did this. Look at me. I did all these movies. And right. They're like, eh, but you were not really part of the seven. So he was part of the Vought machine. So I didn't really, it wasn't honestly a surprise to me because the way he was pushing Andre the whole time. It, it, it's, it threw, yeah, it threw me off a little because I was like, oh, wow. Like, okay. It just seems like at that point I was like, okay, all the parents are messed up in this. Uh, <laughs> Well, I was expecting it for some odd reason in the back of my head. I was expecting it. Right now, mind you, I don't know if it's because uh, of how many movies I've seen or I've seen the elitist kind of stuff in going to like St. John's University or uh, certain colleges that I've been to where right. you see people that have that power and they, it, it's just accepted, you know? Yeah. And, and I, I just see it and I'm like, okay, but also in storytelling wise, I, I saw that coming a mile away. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he's part of this as well. Just like the higher ups in the school and what they were doing, or even with Brink, you know, he was part of this the whole time. So, okay, everybody else is just as bad with uh, right. how how they're exploiting these kids or their powers and things of that nature. So, uh, to me, it wasn't very much in your face going, oh my, that happened. Right. No, it didn't happen to me. I was just like, okay, kind of expected that. But my feeling is, when do I get to see Polarity blow up or something happen to him at some at some time? That's going to be... Uh, so what is... Polarity's powers are the same as Andre? Is that how Correct. it is? Or okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. So, yeah. No, I mean, that's the one thing we haven't seen is if the parents do have powers, like polarity we still haven't seen them use their powers yeah so maybe he has to get a booster remember that <laughs> what a train had to do back in the boys he had to get a booster because he was starting to lose his powers right i wouldn't be surprised if that happens later on and that wouldn't be something uh, that would probably be something that they show later on in future episodes right or he lost his powers and that's why he's so adamant about andre succeeding because he just wants to live vicariously through him Possibly, so there's possibilities there on the story, you know, on which way it goes. Yeah. So, and yeah. then of course the last part I I liked was of course Emma getting tiny and then just going up to the guy the guard's ear. Oh yeah, going in from one side to the other and killing him. Mm -hmm. Um, again, this this show just kind of makes you. It, it just brings a smile to my face sometimes. I was like, just when you think they're not going to. you, I don't know, man. It's just like every time I see it, I was like, oh, well, yeah. I, 
I'm not surprised, but yet I am surprised. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> So, oh, it puts a smile on your face. It's like, I saw that coming, or I thought about that, and it just did happen. And it's like, right. oh, okay, yep. Because these are things that you think about. You're like, oh, my God, what if she's like... so all... sick and sadistic, you know? It's like, they won't do that. Oh, they did do that. All right, hooray! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, which actually lets, you, uh, lets people out there know that we are sick and sadistic in our heads, you know? So... <laughs> oh man <laughs> it's fun though yeah the show is fun and you know it, it's done with a lot of uh tongue-in-cheek humor yeah no yeah. like i said it was a great episode yeah i mean fantastic i, I have no problems with the episode at all it, it kind of it revealed some things i think that you know as the show goes on it's going to reveal more and more but it re- revealed a lot more things about what's going on who knows what yeah and things like that so and then it's just gonna i'm sure it's just gonna grow from there more and more and more yeah which leads us to uh actually we just covered all of episode three which is funny because now we're going right into episode four uh and I i still laugh at the uh the synopsis about that about the police department seeking any information on the persons or people anybody who violated polarity statue in the groin or genital area because right. that's when you know he he kind of blows up his father's groin to get the cell phone and everything else Correct. and that's where we're at so basically uh that was actually episode two that we saw I, that happen correct correct but now it's come full circle where you know at least the uh the the school security team or the police department are are really on top of it right so they use this as a catalyst to uh get people to send in any information yeah. but uh with this episode though we get to see uh well Emma and Sam together you know yeah yeah they uh they finally uh well they're almost hooking up yeah <laughs> that's yeah. what i would say yeah. but i like the way the episode started so because the episode started with the uh, the dean and, or everybody trying to figure out first of all what happened to the guard who has now a hole going from one ear to the other straight through his brain yes um and then we see a shot of the hallway and in the hallway, there's a ton of different guards just all mutilated and everything. Yeah. Um, which lets you know that Sam just went a little bit crazy when they escaped. <laughs> oh, yeah. So. But Shetty winds up finding a small, looks like a doll, like shoe. Shoe. Yeah, it's a little shoe that she found. So she knows. Which makes me question now. All right, we already know how Emma is able to, you know, regurgitate and become smaller. Right. We just see her in those clothes. Does she have little doll clothes that she keeps on her? Probably because when you look at her clothes, her clothes look stupid. (laughs) They just look like it was just thrown together. Um. So I think that's I don't know maybe th- maybe she does I mean she I can't see her like running around naked all the time as a small person yeah because as we've seen her before when she uh, has to vomit to become smaller she's always naked she always has a towel down in front of the toilet and puking in and then she gets smaller and smaller right I'm assuming that she buys a lot of doll clothes and she keeps that in her purse. Or maybe because the Andre and her planned this, they somehow said, oh, okay, if I'm going to be small, I might as well have some clothes. I don't know. They raided somebody's that, Barbie dream house. That's something they haven't really covered. How the hell did, you know, where did she get the clothes? And does she actually wear tiny clothes in other occasions? Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's a good question. In my opinion, yeah, it's like, it's not yeah. an Ant Man thing when everything turns small, you know. No, no, no. It's not a uh, what they called a uh, unstable. Like uh, what was it? Uh, Reed Richards in the Fantastic Four. 
one time they uh what was it one time they came up with the i guess what i was called the answer to why a lot of the superhero costumes seem to either first of all be form fitting but at the same time if they have some kind of ability the, the uniform also has that ability or it can stretch with them or get small with them elasticity and reed, in it yeah yeah and reed richards called it uh, because the, he invented uh costumes with unstable molecules i think it's called ah <laughs> so, interesting yeah so that was the excuse in marvel comics i don't know back in the 80s uh so in this case i think she w walks around with uh like the whole barbie dream house i don't know costumes. i think she walks around naked most of the time because remember she does all these little videos of her getting tiny now i don't know whether in those videos she is naked well the one that we did see when she was first introduced she had kind of like a wrestling garb thing when she was going to battle oh, her hamster. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. So, so she probably does. Yeah, she probably does have a, like a little costume thing that she uses for uh, yeah, her YouTube videos. Interesting. <laughs> uh, the, the one person that I, I like to bring up and that we could definitely talk about within this is Tech Knight in this show. Yes. Uh, he's, a, he's a reporter. He's pretty much like... Um, those talk show hosts that we like Mori Povich mm -hmm. uh, or who else? There's so many more that are out there. You know, you got uh Dr. Phil, Mary Povich, you, you know, like it's those talk shows like, you know, where uh, I don't know. They're trying to, you know, find the truth by, you know, having the actual person there and exploiting whatever it is that they went through and stuff like that. So, but he yeah. has the ability to know if they're telling the truth or not. So yeah, you see, okay. like Sherlock yeah. Holmes kind of sense about him. Well, I think he has powers. Yes, he does. He, he so, was a former student. Right. At, we all know this. He's a former student. He didn't gain the appeal as the seven had back in the day. Right. But he was able to utilize his powers and, and for glory to get into this whole, uh, you know, exploitive uh right, journalism at, at one point you see him somehow sniffing the air because yeah. he's trying to see if he could smell the person i guess sweating or whatever it is that you know mm -hmm. he's trying to look for to see if they're lying uh oh no no he was actually sniffing the air because he could actually smell kate on and uh on andre andre andre, yep. andre. Yep. Yeah. So, but he has a very interesting little uh, quirk, which uh, we'll talk about, I guess, in a uh, moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we could go right into it. Who cares? You know, he was humping, you know, the, like, what was it? The air dryers for your hands in the uh, men's room? And, and so he did it with a donut or a bagel. He did it with a vacuum cleaner, a, um, what is it? A, uh, one of those uh, traffic cones. He did it with a tree, uh, like anything that has a hole in it. He is humping. It's because apparently he can't get off in any other way. Right. And it doesn't work for him. But as soon as he started, tried to exploit certain things that Shetty didn't want to be exploited. She goes, oh, all these will be put up right away. Well, he was going to try to frame her for yeah. uh, Golden Boy's. Um death uh death yeah yeah but so that was very interesting uh like he just the way he does things is just insane i mean uh i just think that i even though we know that she is uh as as the episodes get what i would say um crazier as we yeah well as we <laughs> talk about more episodes in the future yeah, we find out a lot more things about her, about uh, that Shetty, Shetty. Uh, what's her first name? Uh, an Indira, 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 Indira Shetty. Okay, so, so Indira, we find out more things, but at that moment, I was rooting for her for from you know because of what an asshole he was for you. Oh know, yeah, trying yeah. to pinch shit on her. So, <laughs> so, 
Um, but he's an interesting character, I would say. Oh yeah, he is. It, it, uh, oh, I'm forgetting the guy. Oh man, it's going back years, but it, it was one of those exploitative uh, journalists that were out there. Geraldo people- Rivera. No, 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 no. <laughs> this guy was so bad that people wanted him dead. Uh, he was on TV. He was a tall white guy. I forget his name. Uh, but uh, I, I, uh, if you guys, if you listeners know and remember, please let me know. Uh, he was definitely on like a Tales from the Crypt episode and back oh, in wow. the, the 90s and stuff like that. He's He was notorious for like really pissing people off. But... Yeah. Are you talking about what's his name? Um, the guy that came out also in Predator Two. Remember the 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 the. He report? was in Predator Two at one point, I believe that the pr- the guy who plays the reporter. I think so. Yeah, he had his own show. Damn, what's his name? Um. Oh shoot. That he, I think he got killed also in a Predator Two or something like that. But I or Danny Glover hit, you know, uh, punched him in the face or something. But yep, here we go, Morton Downey Jr. Morton Downey Jr. That's who we're talking about, everybody. Yes. So yeah, he was notorious <laughs> about getting into people's faces and yeah, and, and he would be threatened all the time. His life was always threatened. So. He was such a he was such a character. It just reminded guy. me of that. Oh, it, of course. No, he, he it definitely. But this guy had a little bit. It was a little more suave than um <laughs> than, uh, a more little dodgy. bit. But in the sense that you know he got caught on tape right. pumping everything known to man. And on was top it, of that, he, he was so cocky about right. his attitude about le- knowing everything, and then shoving it in people's faces. And being like, yeah, I'm right. And then as soon as like he's caught out, he, he's, you know, he's turned into like a sniveling, grieving little oh, guy. Oh yeah, of course. Well, once he once he got caught, I mean, he was just like putty in her hands or something like that. Yeah. But what did you think of? Uh, so there's a scene where Marie is trying to get help finding her sister so she goes to the guy uh, named rufus who's actually a oh man. yeah <laughs> and then next thing you know she wakes he, up she wakes up in his room and he's naked and she blows up his, his junk yep his <laughs> penis just blows up everybody <laughs> she used that like well things do get engorged when you're excited as a male and she utilized that to the extent and jordan was there to actually experience it and laugh at it yeah but i i'm sure a lot of when i saw that i was like oh there's a lot of women out there going good for you You well that that (laughs) honestly that is a good for her and and it was a revenge for what rufus was doing because literally he's utilizing his powers almost like a roofie you know what? Interesting. His name is Rufus. And you're right. You're absolutely right. You know what? That's probably another, uh, what I would say, another social commentary there. Yeah. Uh, where, she got you know, roofied by yeah, Rufus. She got, she got roofied by Rufus. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And, you know, he just, he got his just desserts. Oh, <laughs> oh man. That guy ain't doing anything with that for a long time or if an, ever. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I didn't want to see the aftermath. That's not my problem. That's his. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. um, Yeah. And then we do see Sam later on. And we get him, you know, fantasizing or looking at the TV. Uh, that's in like this. Uh, I would say a drive in. So he's in a concessionary and he looks at the TV right. and he sees. And he keeps mentioning it as. TV's Jason Ritter. And, which is Jason Ritter. Yeah, which is Jason Ritter. Right. Uh, and uh, Avenue Y. And he's there with the deep puppet. And it's the, the deep as a puppet. And you see the 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 stomach with the, the lungs or whatever it is that the right. deep does in its breathing. And they're getting in his head telling Sam that he has to kill Dr. Cardosa. 
because Dr. Cadoso is like involved with this whole thing and which sends him on this mission to go find Dr. Cadoso. He literally knocks Sam, uh, Emma away and then jumps and leaps about just to go to like Hulk smash. If you think right. about it, he just goes out to in a rage to kill Dr. Cadoso, which he does confront them in the in the family's house. Correct. And then everybody else comes in at that point. You see Andre, you see Kate, you see Emma eventually trying to stop him. Yeah. Which, yeah, it's uh, what I call a uh, he gets Muppet episodes because then he get that also. Was it in episode one or two where he like messed up a whole bunch of uh, special forces people coming after him or something like that? Or am I getting way ahead of like I the, think you're yeah. going ahead of yourself. Yeah, I think I am. So my apologies to everybody out there. So <laughs> yeah, Rob watched ahead. <laughs> oh, I, I'm actually all caught up. I mean, because the show is so good that I just couldn't do what you're doing. I don't know if you're still doing it where you're just watching. I, I only watched one more episode. So we're doing three yeah. or four. So I've already been to five. You've been to five. I've been to all the way to six. Yeah. So. so. Yeah. You're you're good with that. But yeah, the uh you know, this is one where he Sam realizes that he has friends. They talk him down, Correct. which is great. And then we do see what you said, Rob, before with, with Emma. She goes into giant girl. Yeah. She, she gets starts like, to she, eat a whole bunch of spaghetti. Like she's just gorging down, like, you know. Yeah. Uh, as much food as she can, then all and everybody's like really shocked because they was like, "Whoa, wh- wh- when did this ability happen?" <laughs> yeah, and then so, we realize that she's always had it, it's just that right, she does the opposite, and uh, she does stop Sam at that point, which is really good, right? What, but also interesting enough, well, was it there or? Yeah, when they start to, um, after that whole thing, everybody blacks out. And next thing you know, uh, what is it? Uh, Marie and Jordan are in bed together. And that's where the episode leaves off. Yep. Yep. We see Marie and Jordan in bed together. And it's one of those of shocking. And Jordan's a girl. And, you know. Right, Marie. At that point, so it's the the female version of Jordan, but Marie in bed. Right, and even Marie looks a little bit shocked, going, "Oh, I didn't know I'd go that way." Yeah, <laughs> well, I think... well, she did kiss her earlier on. That's true. That in, is true in the, in the episode. So that's not right. something that is too shocking. She did kiss her. <laughs> And then I think in the that's when we see like in the end credits, that's when we see uh Tech Knight uh trying to like he's trying to get up on a uh what is it on a hand dryer in a bathroom and yeah. he's trying to and he's trying to screw the hand dryer too. <laughs> so, yeah. I I you know I sat there and I said to myself, because all of a sudden I started thinking, okay, when they were making this and how I I'm just wondering how many times they they how many cuts they did because they were probably laughing too much. At They're all laughing the shit. their asses off because he's trying to hump a freaking air dryer. All everything it was just everything that you could think of, and it's like how I could imagine when they gave him the script. It was like, okay, dude. So, um, do you have a problem with just you know trying to fuck everything in sight? <laughs> Yeah. So uh I only have two quotes based upon this uh episode what I got which I thought were humorous. Uh Jordan saying it seems that the school is a Mengele clinic and that's to Andre regarding the school after finding out that Emma was sent by Andre <laughs> to find yeah. Sam. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, the last one would be uh, Jordan saying piece of dickless shit after Rufus penis explodes from Marie (laughs) after her waking up. 
Yeah, no, I, I, you know, those are the, that's probably like the only, uh, I think the one quote I, well, I mean, the one quote or whatever that I liked uh, was when uh, Dean Shetty in the beginning was saying, well, you need to get all the guards on this uh, thing. And the guy that's examining the body that has a hole through his head is saying, yeah, but half of them are dead as they're showing the uh, scene with like a ton of bodies on the floor. And she goes, they wouldn't get the other half. (laughs) <laughs> you know, so like she, that's where like, she is like she doesn't care how many people get killed in this thing. Oh yeah. So uh, like I said, I think the show really shows some great, great uh, promise on being. I'm probably having. Wait, didn't it just get picked up for a second season? That it did. So we're yeah. I guess we're not gonna. I mean, I thought it was just gonna be a one off, but if if it's getting a second season, then. Wow, they're really going to. Uh, well, it's I, just very similar to the boys. The boys has been heralded as being as extreme as it was, holding up a really good storyline and right in captivating fans. So this one just did the same, and probably like what you were stating throughout the, this whole time as we've been talking about this uh, this show during our podcasts. I think the commentary is starting to ring through with people. So it works Correct. out. So the writers have been doing their job and thank you to the writers and welcome back the writers <laughs> too, by the way, with the WGA strikes being ending and all. But Well, I mean, they're working. It's there's still no shows out because, you know, we're still the the actors guild is still <laughs> uh, Yeah, yeah, the seg after as, uh, as, as, as of this record as of this recording. The actors go is still on strike. Yeah. Right. But so we still have content out there as always. Uh, the fall of house of usher is out there on Netflix. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other shows that are out there as well. Mm. Upload is back on Amazon prime. I yeah. I saw that they have a third season. It's funny enough. You know, I saw the first season and I loved it. Yeah. I haven't seen the second season. Watch it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I just, I just, I don't know. I just haven't had the time, or I don't know what it is. But it's like every time I was like, uh, I got other stuff to watch, but I want to watch it. Yeah, it's pretty good. I really do enjoy it. I was so glad when uh, the third season actually dropped, and I got to watch the the first two episodes before I left for the weekend for uh, my getaway, and right. it was fun. You know, I was like, oh, this is amazing. So now we have. And you know what's amazing? I just saw the uh what was it? Uh yesterday. Have you heard of this show uh or this uh, mini series in on Netflix called Bodies? I heard of it, have yet to watch it. Oh my god, the first episode hooked me in. So, do you know what the you know what what it's about? Not entirely, but a lot of people have been trying to get me involved. Yeah, so basically it's about a murder yeah, of a particular person in 2023, and then it they turn back the clock and they go back to 1941 and they find the same person in the same position with the same wound in nine in 1941. Then they turn back the clock again to 1889 or something, and it's the same exact thing in the same alley too, like in the same spot. Interesting. And then, yeah, but it, it's it, and then all of them are trying to figure out where this body came from because there's just things that are very strange on it. But it's the exact same person. And then I think the entire huh. series. Yeah, no, it's the same person. It's the exact same person. So the entire, I think, mini series is about trying to figure out what's going on, like all these detectives in different eras trying to figure out the same thing huh like i said the first episode just grabbed me and i was like oh shit i'm in now <laughs> uh it, yeah that actually dropped on october 19th right yeah all right yeah i was away during the time so uh, i saw it and i I'll was like check oh, it out. okay and for some reason i was like all right let me let me check the first episode out and man that was it i was like all right i'm in awesome so that's something in. for you guys to all uh, to look forward to and watch uh, a little uh, cheap plug. Uh, actually, I got asked to be on another podcast, which is going to be interesting. 
come November. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I'm gonna be doing Monarch uh, Legacy of Monsters with ah. uh, on Wilhelm with my friend Ben Beck. So I'll be covering right. that with him. So uh, my love of Godzilla is coming into play. My knowledge. So <laughs> uh, I get to do that. But look forward to that, everybody. November seventeenth is the uh, start date for Apple TV Plus for Monarch. That does but, look interesting because it's supposed to be a prequel to all the monster movies, or all, all the, uh, or at least all the a prequel and a current strategy of what's going on because yeah. literally it's Wyatt Russell and Kurt Russell. Wyatt is playing the younger version of the character back in the seventies. Uh-huh. And then Kurt Russell plays the older version of that particular character currently oh okay so it's interesting and yeah. obviously it meshes into the uh the, the monster verse as i should say right so that that's out there for uh you know for legendary the legendary monster verse i should say but yeah not not the monster verse that was supposed to be out years ago with the uh universal that we kind of tore apart with right. uh the mummy <laughs> On Fantasy Picks movie oh, edition. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> if you guys want to catch it, you could catch that episode. We are we're not we're not kind to that move uh, to that movie. No, we're not. <laughs> but as we come to a close to this particular podcast, let's talk about where people could hear you. So obviously, I already mentioned it. Rob, would you like to? Uh, yeah, no. Um, you could people? you know you could catch me on Fantasy Picks movie edition. Uh, the podcast is about us. Looking into big tentpole movies, you know, the overhyped movies that did not make it in the box office or were critics. And what we do is we basically put our own spin on it, uh, on what went wrong, you know, and how we would have made it better. And then, of course, uh, Fantasy Picks also has our top five movie draft, which it could be any genre, any actor, any director. And we basically do it just like a football draft but we do it you know uh with the subjects of film and then we started a new one called behind the score which our first episode's already out with han zimmer and our next episode is going to be with um danny elfman so awesome. that should be fun uh, and where else could you hear me obviously you could hear me right here on panels of pixels podcast as always uh we are you know, Rob and I are going to continue our coverage on Gen V for this particular season, as well as with uh, Steve Brown and I covering just Loki season two. So uh, you'll catch Rob here, uh, our coverage with Gen V, and then Steve and I on Loki season two. Can I tell you how good damn Loki is? Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> oh, my God, man. I, all I know is that Loki, the way Loki started, with this first episode, I was like, now that's how you start a damn season. Yeah. <laughs> the writers so, hit it. They did it very well. Yeah. And as always, like I said before, and I've always said, uh, you can find me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, as always. Uh, the next few up, I should say, because I still have to edit them. I've been away for the weekend, so I didn't get my editing skills up and ready and have everything prepped for you. But you'll you. have... Yeah, how dare I? Uh, Total Recall will be on your way. And that's the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger, not the other one, not the remake. So you can hear myself and Jason Kabasi break that down. And you'll definitely have The Wolfman uh, from 1941 that myself and Ben Elmore have broken down and our, our thoughts about that universal classic. And, and by then, the way, in Fantasy Picks, we will be covering the Total Recall, the one that sucked. <laughs> all right cool <laughs> yeah and the wolfman which was with benicio de zorro which didn't get very good reviews and didn't make it very well and so the ones that you're covering are the best ones the ones <laughs> i'm going to be covering are going to be the worst ones <laughs> so look forward to that you can use that as a way of reference everybody maybe we should coordinate <laughs> yeah we should <laughs> but uh we didn't i just happened to just put those out recently <laughs> or getting those out to you guys recently but look forward to those particular things on uh adrenaline cinema podcast you could also hear me as rob had pointed out too on fantasy picks movie edition as well 
when I'm able to join in and have fun with everybody and talk about the stuff that we could fix about these particular movies that were so bad. Yeah, we'll become arm or what I would like to call armchair uh, movie executives. <laughs> there you go. But uh, other than that, that you can find us here as always. But uh, for now, if you want to submit any feedback, unfortunately, we didn't get any feedback because I didn't send anything out there for you guys to send feedback for. So that's that's my fault. That's my that that was my problem. How unfortunately, dare you. how dare I take a <laughs> vacation? All right. Well, with that, you could you know you could hear us on Spotify, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice. If ratings are available, please do give us a rating. Five stars is always greatly appreciated, as well as anything that you can write down stating what you like about the podcast. Because with Apple Podcasts, that's a way for everybody to know. Apparently, that is the uh, the dynamic that people look at and say, hey, I got to check this podcast out. Uh, or word of mouth. That's always the best way. So if you tell a friend, that works out best, too. Right. Um. You can find us on Facebook, which would be facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. Like I said, normally I put an image for you to uh, look at and say, oh, th- we're covering this particular episode of this for this week. Just leave your comments below. So all you have to do is uh, check our Facebook page, which would be facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. If you feel that you need to send out an email, that is greatly appreciated as well. All you have to do is send that email to panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels two is spelled out T O pixels and the number one at gmail.com. You can just write out your thoughts. We'll read them on the actual podcast when we come time for, you know, for listener feedback. If not, if you don't feel like you want to actually type out your thoughts, then fine. Just record yourself. We have all these cool schnazzy devices out there, iPads, phones, computers, everything. Record yourself and just send that as an attachment, and then we'll play it on the podcast as we're recording. We can be found on YouTube. A lot of people like to listen to their podcasts on YouTube for some odd reason. It's really strange. But uh, we do have some video there on occasion when we do interviews with celebrities and things of that nature, or we just want to have fun. So all you have to do is search for Panels to Pixels podcast. While you're there, all you have to do is subscribe, give us a thumbs up on the actual episode that you like, or ring the bell to be notified every time, you know, the episode is up. And just like with Facebook, we'd be found on Instagram. So it works hand in hand because it's the meta universe. So uh, literally at Panels to Pixels podcast. That's all it is at Panels to Pixels podcast. And uh, you can find us there and follow us there. I like to send up the same image like I do for Facebook on that. And then just leave your comments below. And that's it. Awesome. But uh, other than that, uh, the next episode that you'll be getting from us will be Loki season two, probably episodes three and four. So uh, just Leave your uh, thoughts in the comments below when it comes to Facebook and everything else, just like I said. And then uh, we'll be back with that with Steve and I. Or if Rob wants to jump on, just have fun. We could do that. Uh, We've been having fun with uh, Loki, but I think I'm going cross-eyed with all the time twisty stuff that's going on there. It's not that bad compared to the first one, I think. Or the mess that, you know, uh, what is it? Um mcu has been trying to do with the whole multiverse thing yeah kind of like with the uh what was it? ant-man and wasp quantumania was the oh. last one that came out so everybody got kind of like you know messed up on that yeah it's dreadful but at least with this <laughs> you have you have characters and actors that we do enjoy and we love and uh you know oh my gosh got- short round is so what's his name um uh, what's the real name oh uh, no but the oh, character no, oh, you're uh, talking about key Kiha- Ki Huai Kwan. Right. Yeah, my God, he's great in this uh, show. Oh, yeah. He is so good. Yeah, I, I love him as that. It, it's it's like having an adult short round in the multiverse <laughs> out there. It's so great. I love him. 
and then of course we got Sylvie and we got Loki back and then Mobius as well. So uh, just food for thought, everybody out there, is Mobius another variant of Kang? Talk, let us know, come back to us. But until then, thanks for listening. I'm Mark. I'm Robert. Different panel, different pixel, same podcast. This is Panels to Pixels Podcast. And we'll see you all on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night.